video. Welcome to video 15 from our option pricing and option trading strategy series. And I'd like to talk now about the fourth reason that people use options, and that is to create defined risk positions that they um, find appealing. And we're going to talk about that now in some detail. Let's start off with something easy. Let's say um, we go along a call with the strike price of 31. On this spreadsheet, um, what's going on here is that at a point in time when these are the bid and ask quotes for calls and puts with strikes 30, 31, 32, and 33, we take some position in one or several of these options or the underlying stock also. And then we draw a diagram of what our profit position looks like at some point in the future. Uh, when this data was gotten, it had uh, the options had two weeks until uh, expiration. So the, any point in time after that will result in the options having a, a remaining life of less than 250 seconds of a year. And so here I have it set up to uh, effectively zero. <clears throat> so we'll be effectively looking at the option positions at option expiration. The reason I can't just type a zero in there is because if I do, then uh, in D1 and D2 in the Black-Scholes option pricing model, which I use to calculate the Black-Scholes exit value, uh, we end up dividing by uh, zero and that can't be done. So this is my proxy for zero. Um, nine, a decimal point, then nine zeros and the number one, the digit one. Okay, so uh, that's what's going on here. Here's the, uh, the positions we take, the number of each of these contracts, and here's the bid and ask quotes again. This shows the cash flow at initiation. Uh, this is the exit value uh, per the Black-Scholes option pricing model. Uh, this is the actual exit cash flow because Black-Scholes model is a per share. And then over here we calculate the profit and I have turned off the commission. So we're not going to worry about that now. So if I go along this call, uh, I see that it's a defined risk position because um, the call cost me $108 and so my maximum loss is $108 and uh, I have an infinite potential gain. So I understand the risk, the upside and downside risk of this position, okay? Uh, this graph appears over here also. Um, if I'm short a call, then uh, this is the profit diagram. Here I have a maximum gain um, of, uh, since I'm selling at the bid, $107, and, and an infinite potential loss, and I understand that it's an infinite potential loss, so it's a defined risk position. Uh, same thing uh, would be true with puts. If I go long, say, one put three, uh, then I will have this profit diagram, uh, defined risk, there's my maximum loss, uh, $135, and there's a maximum possible gain. Looks like that's about $565. Uh, and this is put three with a strike price of 32. If I go short that put, um, same thing, defined risk position, maximum gain of $134, maximum loss of, it looks like, $566. And so that's defined risk. Uh, uh, you, you know your uh, maximum gain or loss, and you understand that and are acceptable, uh, and you find it acceptable. Let's now consider an investor who's considered neutral on a stock, neither bearish nor bullish, but neutral. That means they don't think stock price will move much. Let's say we have someone that thinks the stock price will stay you know, right around 31.24 bid, 31.25 ask. Okay, we have someone who thinks that's the case. Notice at that price, which is the price uh, I'll put right here, 31.24, at a price of 31.24, this calculates the profit for us quite quickly. Um, that put as a strike price of um, put three has strike price three, which is 32. So if stock price is 31.24, the right to sell at 32 is worth, um, uh, we're not surprised, uh, $76. And because it, you have the right to sell at 32, and the stock price is assumed to be 31.24, so it's worth seventy-six dollars, and uh, that's our pro uh, and and uh, our profit is fifty-eight because 
we received uh, 134 when we wrote the put, and we have to pay its value at you know maybe a moment or a minute before expiration of $76 to, to close, assuming we're trying to avoid um, exercise on assignment, <clears throat> and then we'd, we'd uh, profit by $58, ignoring commissions, okay? It's perfectly fine to ignore commissions for this. And um, that would make sense uh, because it's profitable. That's why it makes sense. We'd be rational to expect that. Another thing that would make sense would be for us to write a, uh, oh, a uh, 32 strike call. If, we're, if we were a 32 strike call, um, we would uh, receive $107 when we wrote it. If the uh, stock price at option expiration is $31.24, um, the uh, Call two with a strike price of thirty-one dollars. Excuse me, thirty-one dollars strike price. Um, that call option uh, would expire in the money, and since we're short the call, we'd have an obligation. Um, if we held it through expiration, we're trying to avoid that obligation by closing our position earlier. You know, before option expiration, let's say even a minute before would be fine. So we sold open, we have to buy to close, and we'd have to pay the value then of $24, and we'd still profit $83. So that would make sense. Uh, you know, given our expectations, the stock price would stay or be at $31.24 option expiration. Yeah. Another thing that we could do is we could um, combine positions. Uh, we could write a 30 two strike call and we could write a 32 strike put also. So write call three and we'll also write put three. And now when we do this, uh, I'll, I'll pull your attention over here to this other diagram. Uh, we have two, we have a short call position and a short put position. <clears throat> and then we have what we see here, the combination of the two. And this uh, <clears throat> two space here is quite helpful because here we have profit on the vertical axis and we've got stock price at this remaining time to expiration now effectively zero. And so we get to see all three of these profit diagrams. This uh, light uh, lavender color would be, of course, the short put. This uh, <clears throat> violet color would be the short call, and then this uh, royal blue color uh, pyramid shape would be the net, I call the net total, the combination, and we see just the net total alone over here. So it's helpful here to look and see the, the all of the profit diagrams that are relevant, and then the net total here by itself, okay? And so this, uh, this trade here is uh, an interesting trade. It has a name. This is a short straddle, short straddle. And uh, interesting things about this are that it has a maximum possible gain, and that maximum, maximum possible gain occurs at the strike price of these options that we wrote, which in this case is 32. Again, the strike price of 32 is, a, is our third strike price and, and that I have in this spreadsheet. And so that's where our maximum profit occurs. We do have an infinite potential loss here, stock price goes very high toward infinity, then we have an infinite loss. We have a non-infinite but rather large potential loss here on this side of $510 should uh, stock price fall significantly. Remember, this is all based upon our assumption, uh, the assumption that we're neutral, and then, of course, our assumption can turn out wrong. And if it turns out wrong and stock price goes to zero, again, we'll lose Five hundred and ten dollars. We'll have to pay five hundred and excuse me. We'll have to um, uh, uh, buy to close the option, and we'll end up losing five hundred and ten dollars. And so we have, again, profit is on the vertical axis. Now, what's interesting about these? Very important to know is that we have a safety buffer here. Here's the horizontal axis, and the idea is because we received a total of one hundred ninety dollars when we wrote these fifty six. When we wrote the call, 134, when we wrote the put, we have $190 that we've received. And we get to enjoy um, <clears throat> uh, the per share equivalent of that, which is $1.90, um, above and below the 32 strike price, and still break even or, or make a profit. So um, our 
break evens for this would be the strike price of 32 plus or minus a dollar ninety. So on the up end we have thirty three ninety, uh, and then uh, on the downside we have uh, thirty dollars uh, and ten cents. Okay, so again. Uh, 32 minus a dollar 90 is thirty dollars and ten cents 32 the strike price plus a dollar 90 is 33.10 and that becomes the and there is the the break-even point on the downside it, it doesn't show because it's it's just showing the 30 but at uh, you know you, you can see at 30 we're losing ten dollars 9.99 so at a price of thirty dollars and ten cents we'd break even here uh, it shows at a price of 34 we lose ten dollars <throat> so of course at a price of um, 33.90 we'd break even and so interesting we have two break evens on the straddle straddles are very popular trades but one thing to recognize when we look at this we get this right here gets us nervous this gets us nervous so what we could do is we could Hmm, we need something that's going to balance off this negative 100 slope here. And so what we might want to do then is to buy a call with a higher strike price. So I'll buy a call with a strike price of 4, and look what happens to our, our net total profit diagram. Now over here you can see all the individual pieces. You can study that on your own. What I've added is this. This is what's new. A 33 strike long call to the mix. And we can see that what that does is at at prices above um, 33, um, the slope of our line here is zero, and that's just going to be the sum of the slopes of all these uh, these three lines here. And um, and what we see is uh, here here they they sum to zero. So what we have here is a slope of uh, plus 100, and what we have here is a slope of minus 100 there is a zero plus we add this zero slope up here and uh, plus 100 minus 100 and uh, zero all sum to zero so that's actually quite interesting um, that at any at any point on the net total which we see all by itself here here we see it in this royal blue line color line is uh, the slope there will be the sum of the air slopes at that point it's also true that the value on that point let's say at 35 for example is the sum of the values of all the individual pieces at 35 so the reason that we have this value right here in the net total is because that is the sum of this and this and this so remember those two things about uh, <clears throat> our net total line, and we just see it by itself over here. Spend some time looking at this and understanding why the net total is what it is. Um, and again, again, you see the net total by itself over here. Now this, uh, this is an interesting position. It doesn't really have a name, at least not a name that I'm aware of, but it's interesting. Now another thing you might say is, um, hey, this still makes me nervous. Even though there's, there's not an infinite potential loss here, this makes me nervous. So what we could do then is, let's see, we have this positive 100 slope line. I need a negative 100 slope line. What would give me that? Well, I'm thinking a long put would. So let's buy a put with a, a strike price uh, lower than 3, which would be 2. And then we add that in. So now what I've added is this to it. Uh, our our stew here, if you will, and we end up with this. We end up with this. Now, notice that this defined risk position has a limited loss. We have a maximum loss of uh, $22. We can't lose more than $22 no matter what stock price is at option expiration. And uh, we have a maximum gain here. Now, the maximum gain now is about $78. Now we're not surprised that the maximum gain here is lower than the maximum gain when we had just a short straddle because what we've done now is we've eliminated a lot of downside risk. We've eliminated much downside risk here. And um, so therefore we'd expect that because we got this benefit of, of putting a maximum loss into place, we've limited our loss, that as a consequence of that, we have a lower potential maximum profit. It's a very important trade-off there to understand. And this has a name. This is known as a short iron 